Hi, it's Sandra here from Create in Spain and today I'm doing another Concepts app video. Now I cannot exaggerate the usefulness of this app if you have an electronic cutting machine. And I'm not talking about ones that you can only cut out designs that they give you cartridges for or you buy cartridges for. I'm talking about the ones where you actually create your own designs. Now if you have one of those and you have an iPad, for goodness sakes, get yourself the Concepts app because this is so capable of making some brilliant cut files for your machines. You will wonder what on earth you ever did without it. The proviso for this is that you really do need a Apple iPencil or some kind of stylus. But if you have that already and you have an iPad and you haven't got concepts, then please go get it. And I'm not being paid for this. I'm not sponsored in any way. I bought it myself. But it's just such a brilliant app for making cut files. Now I use it for all sorts of things. But the thing that I'm going to show you how to do today is a background die you can see on the left hand side that there is a background shape there and that's the type of thing that I'm talking about. And I'm going to open up this untitled piece here. Now what I do is I select a paper size that is the same size as that which I want to use and you can do that very easily by going to this cog at the bottom. You can change the size and the measurements if you wish. You can have inches, centimetres, whatever you want. And you can set up your page like that very easily to whatever size you want. Now because I am doing card making, most of my designs are not going to be any larger than this. And this is, I think, 10 centimetres by 15, if I remember rightly. Now, you notice I have a black frame around mine. And the way to do this is to tap on this series of dots that form squares just here, just above the uh, layers folder here. And if you do that with a tool selected, when you tap on that, you can actually find some shapes that you can do. So for example, there's an arc. Now I don't actually want an arc, but you get an arc in, you just draw around anywhere on the outside or inside that will fill that arc in. Now the same happens with a rectangle and the other shapes that they have. And then you can make it whatever size you want. But in this particular case, this is just the frame that I'm going to be using for my cut file. Now look upon a background file like you would trying to create a stencil because you can use it for either. You know, once you've got it made, it's up to you whether you use it for a stencil or not. Now I don't choose to have mine in this mode most of the time. I use it just for these tools. This is more for uh, architectural type drawings and that type of thing. So I switch that off and all the background grid goes away because I haven't set one. And now you want to look at the tools that you have. And on the top left there's an arrow and if you go to the arrow you'll see here that I've got the fixed width line set. Uh, mine happens to be set to 0.73 millimeters. Now the good thing about doing this in the actual size that you're going to be drawing is you can see what you're going to get. So that is going to be the thickness of the line. Now if I go to this arrow again, you see this funny sort of little, um, well it's not a circle but it's like a, a funny shape above the palette. And that is your smoothing or what I like to call the wobble factor. And if you move that up or down, you can control how much wobble your design will have. If you move it to 100% and you draw a wibbly wobbly line, it will still come out as a straight line. Okay, I'm going to take this particular line out just by doing the back button. And I've got it on 40%, so if I do a line now, you can see it's a bit wibbly. 
when I take my pen off, it straightens out slightly. So you can play around with that to get the effect that you like. Now, in point of fact, I don't think that line is quite thick enough. So I'm going to select the select arrow, tap on that and it will select it. Then I can go to my arrow on the top here and I can make the line thicker. So I can make it really thick or I can make it just a little bit thicker. I think 1.3, round about that is quite nice. Tap again anywhere else and it will just settle itself down. So what sort of design you do is entire, whoops, I need to have my pen selected. What design you do is entirely your choice, but you can do whatever you like. If you make a mistake, either do the tap at the back button or you can select it and delete it. It's up to you. And I'm just going to do a very simple sort of design. Now the good thing is that if you decide, once you've drawn it, if you think, oh, I'm not sure that that is really very good, maybe I haven't got the lines as thick as I want or whatever. If you tap the arrow, the selection tool arrow, and you select everything that you want to change, you can then go to the little arrow and you can alter that line width again. You can alter out how wibbly wobbly it is as well. So you can make it really wibbly wobbly or you can have it not so wibbly wobbly. The choice is yours. But you can still do it after you've actually finished your design. So it's really great from that point of view. Oops, need to select my pen again. Now you can have your lines the same thickness all through the design, or you can alter it. Sometimes on a design you want a difference in the line thickness for different parts of it. Just play in here. I'm just putting something on here and then select. And you can take bits out, you can move it, you can alter colour, the shape, the size, the thickness, all those sorts of things you can do. Now, important things to consider. If you are making something like this as a cut file, you need to have everything linked together. So if you have any free floating objects, when they are cut as a cut file, they'll just fall out of your design. So unless it is linked to something else, it won't be in place. So if, for example, I were to draw a circle, now this isn't linked to anything else, so if I want it to stay in the design, I have to link it. And if this isn't linked to something else, then I need to link that. And so on, and so on, and so on. So it is like a stencil in that everything has to be linked. Now, once you have got the design that you want, you tap on this bottom left button, the one that's got the arrow going upwards, and it gives you lots of export options. So you tap on that, and you've got so many different options that you can use. Now, I always go for a PNG, transparent, and I just export it like that, the configured size, and just export it. And then I can import it into Shortcuts a lot, which is what I use. But you can import those things into other software for different machines. If you've got a Cameo, you can use it with Silhouette Studio and so on and so forth. And you can simply trace it and it will be a cut file then. Now, the other thing that you can do with this is you can erase items. So if you click on the eraser. Uh, for example, on the left-hand side, I've got some bits that are sticking out that are a bit iffy there, so I can take that down a bit if I want to. There we go. You can do all sorts of things. If there's a little bit in the centre of your design that you don't like, you can smooth it out with the eraser. And you can zoom in really, really big, and you can get rid of it in a more accurate manner if that's what you need to do. And then once you've done that, you can put it back to the size that you wanted it. So 
and that's 100%. So this has got so many uses that it's incredible. If you do a background design like this, it can either be a background cutout, so it would be like a die cut for a card background. You could cut it out, you could use it as a stencil. If you cut it out in the reasonably thick card, you can use it as an embossing folder and put it through um, a manual embossing machine. So there are so many things that you can do with this once you've actually got your design down. And once you get used to this, it is absolutely brilliant. And you'll wonder how on earth you ever lasted without it. You can save yourself a fortune on buying designs. You can have your own artwork. Now, if you're really, really, really not artistically inclined and you say, but I can't even draw a straight line, go on somewhere like Pixabay and get a design to start off with and then make it your own. You can trace it. You can import the image, just use the down arrow, make a separate layer, and then you can trace lines over it, pick out the bits that you want, leave out the bits that you don't, and you will still be able to then upload that into your other software and to use it for a cut file. Okay, that's it. I hope by now I might be preaching to the converted, but in case I'm not, please give Concepts a go. It is not a very expensive app, and it's very, very good, and shh, keep it quiet. They're introducing some new features very soon. Okay, thanks for watching. Take care now. Bye-bye.